you hear it? Oh, can't you hear it? Mind me. Nostalgic optimism. Nah, that's, that's kind of off. Two words that when you put them together, they just don't feel right. Nostalgia it brings distant memory of things that are in your past, you know, that invoke this very strong feeling, mostly positive of a time that was maybe simpler. A nostalgic feeling for me would be when my brother and I would be awake at midnight, uh, watching Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, realizing we're hungry and that we wanted cheese dogs. Oh, and then microwaving said cheese dogs and them exploding in the microwave because they're filled with cheese and it would just burn your mouth and it was, we'd microwave Oscar Mayer cheese dogs. Ugh. And then we'd watch Harry Potter up to the point where Professor McGonagall would show up and then we'd just be too tired. But anyway, okay, okay, that's, that's beside the point. But optimism to me is more of a present tense kind of word. It's you feeling hopeful for what's in the now and then what's to come. Optimism is kind of almost like a mindset that you could have going forward. You have faith and you trust that the future holds something really good for you. And that's why this phrase, nostalgic optimism, feels kind of off because how can you long for something that's already happened and then still be happy about something that's coming? But this phrase is the way I would describe the sound used by the music of the Avalanches and specifically in their debut album, Since I Left You. Today, I wanna to share with you this band that has brought me such longing and joy and optimism and has given me nothing but a huge smile on my face. And the truth is this band has brought me out of some of the darkest times of my life. And it all begins with the album, Since I Left You. When you start up the album, you are almost instantly transported into this party, this groove and this vibe that's so infectious. And it's not only with its hooks and chord progression, but it's mainly in the style. The vibe of this album is the equivalent of somebody who's just grinning from ear to ear, open mouth, smiling, dimples coming out and everything. It just has that feeling just soaking through it. And I mean dimples because, well, I also, I have a lot, I, I have a lot of dimples. Any negative feelings you have, they just seem to melt away as you're swept into this never ending party. And the thing that really got me with this album is how this optimism, this joy this album has, just goes directly straight to my heart. It just, it's so personal, which is why I'm gonna also describe this music as nostalgic because it seems to pinpoint that moment. For example, I think, I think this is a feeling that all of us have had at some point. You wake up as a kid, you know that today is gonna be such a good day, you're going to, you're gonna be going to like the zoo with all of your friends and you're gonna have such a good time and you're just so excited and you've been pumped for this all week. And you, you get there and like the sun is going down and it feels so good. You're having such a fun time laughing and enjoying everything, seeing all these animals, whatever. Food, smiling and thinking, what a, what a great time. Look at us. Hey, look at us. That feeling right there is just the embodiment of this album. So how does this album do it? How is it optimistic? and nostalgic all at the same time. Well, there's a few reasons, but it's because literally every single sound that comes out of this album is sampled from something else. Yeah, what? Mm. And that's why today we're gonna talk about the avalanches. It's a lot to, oh, oh no. Oh no, oh no. Ah! <laughs> The Avalanches, they actually weren't the Avalanches at first. They were a band called Alarm 15. Kind of a noisy punk rock band. Obviously it didn't really make it too well because they uh, disbanded and reformed as the Avalanches in Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, 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 Australia. Formed in Melbourne, Australia. Members and college school friends Robbie Chatter, Tony de Blasi, and Darren Seltzman started to create this super unique and creative dance music that was made exclusively from this sea of old vinyl they accumulated together as a group to create this music. Literally, they would go into record shops and buy like crates of old records, not know at all what's inside the crates, go through it and find these awesome samples that they accumulated into this album. It's like the ultimate argument that sample-based music is a source of creativity and that it should be celebrated. Being the Frankenstein of music, you would expect this album to be kind of disjointed, right? But the truth is, it's far from that. It's like someone took one piece from a thousand different jigsaw puzzles, pushed them, forced them all together, and created this like brand new picture that works. Like here, check out this brief clip.
From these samples that they used, they created this nostalgic air by using this old music. They are summoning the spirits of music's past to bring these familiar feelings. And then if that's not enough, this album is one giant bop. It's so freaking catchy. For example, let me, let me take like a random track off of this album and let's count. Let's just count how many hooks that this song has that have dug deep into my brain and will never leave. The bass line. Sending those signals. Sending those signals. Sending those signals. Sending those signals. That part? Yeah. Sometimes you don't understand. Understand. That hypnotic beat, oh, man. And then there's that that one scream. Just you put it all together, it's just it's just so crazy. There's a total of eight hooks. There's eight hooks that have dug so deep into my brain in this one track that's out of so many. And I even mentioned the other hugely catchy tracks, like the title track since I left you, Electricity, the Flight 2-2 is off to Honolulu. Flight 2-2 is off to Honolulu. And the ever infamous Frontier Psychiatrist. Boy needs therapy. I'm gonna kill you. The greatest meme crossover I've ever experienced was the mix of The Simpsons and Frontier Psychiatrist. Avalanche Simpsons posting is content that I could only imagine in my dreams. Like I mentioned before, this album is one giant party. The tracks, they just flow into each other so well. You'll start listening to it, and then before you even know it, you're already like eight tracks in, and you just have no idea where one starts and one ends, and it's just this awesome time that you're having. You could just get lost in the music. I love music that does this. The, the avalanches, this story and how I discovered them is actually something that I feel is pretty important that I want to share with you. It's how I discovered this band and how they took me out of a dark place. So back in my first year of college, I, I was living in the dorms and I was playing in the marching band. I, uh, I was just so generally excited and nervous, like super nervous for this new stage in my life, but it was like an exciting nervous. Um, in the marching band, I met this saxophone player. He lived in the dorms. He was directly across the hall from me at the dorms. And um, when the school year began, at some point we were just talking music and he decided, you know what, I wanna share some albums with you. And I decided to do it back. And this was, by the way, you know, old. I'm, I'm a little older because this was before uh, Spotify became like the norm. Literally, I had all of my music on iTunes that I got from CDs or people sharing music through flash drives, you know, that was that was the time. He shared with me this flash drive um, that contained so many albums that to this day have made such an effect on me. Some really crazy classics. I mean, just a few off the top of my head. It's like Apex Twins, the, the, that, that first album by Apex Twin, the uh, Selected Works one, you know, like just amazing stuff. Animal Collective, the album Feels. Oh, yeah, he, 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 he gave me that one. And he even gave me like Electric Wizard's Dope Throne. So it was just all over the place, you know? With him a few albums, like I know, I know that I shared with him Toon Yard's Who Kill. On this flash drive though, he also gave me the album Since I Left You. And at this time I never heard of this album. I had no idea what it even was. And I was too excited to listen to Animal Collective that I, that I didn't give this album a shot until a few months later. Now, as the semester went on, I, I found myself falling into this like, super tough, depressive stint. You know, the program I was in, in, in simple terms, it just really wasn't good for me at all. I had this really odd relationship with someone that ended in pretty bad terms. Um, it was no one's real fault, except for the fact that we were literally 18 years old. And the people that were around me, they just essentially, they weren't my people, right? And I felt like I was not myself. I still was trying to escape this person I was in high school and I wanted to become this new thing, but I felt like I couldn't get away. Um, because of these factors, I fell into this really dark, depressive state. And as I was walking from the bottom of campus all the way up to another class on campus, it's a big, big university, so you know it's a long walk, um, I decided to finally give a fair listen to the album Since I Left You. <sighs> the album, it really, 
it really clicked for me on a level that I really didn't expect. It it just it, it was just awesome to listen to. But the main thing that got me, this main vocal sample that is used, it just proudly sings, you know, since I left you, I found the world so new. And to me, at that point in my life, it shook up everything. In like that that voice that just sings that line, the since I left you, it just It felt like it was possible for me to move on and feel happy about the future. It made me feel excited about things to come, that it's okay to let crap go and move move forward in my, in my life. This was the start of a new outlook in my life. And from that point forward, I, I buckled down to become the person that I really wanted to become. The, the next year, I actually transferred to a new program at a new university, which was so much better of a fit myself and I I took control of what I wanted to study and how I wanted to progress and how I wanted to live my life I left behind all of that like horrible luggage that I was carrying with me at this old university and I, I started brand new you know I left it behind and I started new while there were many other factors that pushed this new outlook on my life it was helped so much by the avalanches music it has this effect that all of us, I think, generally know about, but sometimes we need it to be said to understand its true power. Music just works on a different level than anything else. And because of that, when a piece of music really hits you at the right time, in the right moment, at the right place, the, the after effects of it can be just monumental. Without Since I Left You, I would not have been able to make this turnaround in my life because because of this music, I became the person I am today. And if it wasn't for my friend who shared with me this flash drive, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Over time, my friend who shared this album to me, we started to drift apart. And uh, as we you know, pursued our lives, you know, we had other plans for where we were going. Um, but I do want him to know that this album that he gave me, this flash drive and all the other music on it, really had a profound impact on my life. Well, where do I even go from there? Sorry, they got a little emotional. Well, I, actually, no, there's a lot more to say because they have two other albums. I haven't even talked about their other two albums, actually. Uh, Wildflower, their second album, it was released literally 16 years later from their first album. Everyone thought they were dead. And it is just as amazing how they were able to retain the magic from this first album in this new album, but it also evolved. They evolved their music and they included guest artists collaborating on their songs, including this freaking awesome song called Frankie Sinatra, which features both the legendary rapped artist Danny Brown and the one and only MF Doom, rest in peace. <laughs> it's a great song. Then four years later in 2020, they released We Will Always Love You right at the back end of the year, like in December. It was just in time for the holiday season. And in my opinion, this album is its own just crazy good masterpiece. And to go in depth, it would be its own video altogether. But this album is one that you should not sleep on. It's so, so good. And I would even put it up for Contender for 2020 being my favorite album. Well, thanks for watching my video. I know I kind of just skimmed over the rest of the Avalanche's discography. I mean, all of it is fantastic, but this video, I really wanted to focus on the uh, the debut and my experience with it and how much of an effect it had on me. I hope you got something out of this video, and most importantly, please, if I if I want one thing to come out of this video, I want you to check out the Avalanches and check out this album. It is so good, and you will not regret it. Um, do the stuff that all YouTubers ask to do. Subscribe, like it. There's more videos coming. Uh, if you really like it, if you have more opinions and thoughts about the Avalanches, please leave them down in the comments, and... Uh, you're the best, you're the best. <laughs> Avalanches forever. <laughs>